Uh huh. Well, there you are. I don't know who you are, but you're there. Hey, it's Gray coming from Glendale. Um, I'm uh, going to show you a, another idea about milk. Um, now, if you watch my videos, you're going to see that I've been living on milk now for about six years, or almost 100%. Most days I drink close to two gallons or 7.5 liters of generally skim or non-fat milk, and but and that that's my diet when I stay at my apartment. Sometimes I stay at my mom's house. She lives in the same city as me, and uh, now she drink, eats more of a typical American diet, um, big variety of foods, and some of her food sort of ends up in my milk. Now in this case my mother likes to have a couple of cups of coffee in the morning. She uses a coffee maker to um, to make the coffee. In this case I'm going to put her coffee grounds in my milk. I'll show them to you. And most people throw these away but I I don't like the waste. I um, I actually, well, if you watch other videos I've made, you'll see that I've, um, I've kind of learned that you can eat things that are sort of unpleasant if you eat them quite slowly. And in fact, you can enjoy them. Um, so most people think coffee grounds are pretty unpleasant to eat or would be if they ate them. But um, if you if you put them in the milk you get them in smaller doses um, and they can be rather pleasant um, or at least sufficiently pleasant that um, you'll enjoy them that the, it'll be worth it I guess that you'll feel okay about having done it or at least I do so I'll just show you so Here's my gallon of milk. I'll uh, lift it up. It's a Foremost brand. It was bought at a uh, at a market down the down the road a bit. And here's my funnel. Um, it's a biggie. Um, probably it was more intended. Well, I guess it could be intended for cooking or automotive fluids. So I'll put that there. That goes in the neck of the milk jug. And here is my coffee grounds. Typical uh, filter that the water had gone through in the machine. Now, I guess I'm going to try to let you see this. I'll put the milk jug here. Push the computer back a bit and I'm going to dump the grounds into the filter. So you kind of see me doing that and uh, kind of knock them out a little bit. Now I, since they're not a sort of precious food, I don't bother to clear it. Well, the, the, the ones at the very bottom are kind of stuck to the filter because the filter is wet. Now I'm going to take a chopstick. This is my other tool for putting food into milk containers. And you can see it's still in the milk container. So some have already gone down in there. And I'm going to, with the chopstick, I'm going to just push the rest down in. Now, for me, I I often put different kinds of solid food into milk this way and um, the chopstick which the coffee grounds of course are very loose like um, sort of a um, what would you say the best I can think of is like like dirt or dust or anything that would kind of break up is broken up into very small pieces sometimes bigger things I cut them bigger more solid food I cut into small pieces to go down the funnel but if it gets stuck I can push it down with the chopstick so I'll take that out put it to the side now 
I guess that's the milk container. Uh, you can see the coffee grounds at the bottom. Um, and almost all solid food goes to the bottom, in my experience. Um, a few things actually do float on the top, but I'm trying to think. I don't know which ones they are offhand. Um, anyway, now when I'm going to, and I can, if I look down now in the milk, I can see, well, it's a little darker. I think you can also see that, right? It's not pure white anymore. Um, but I can see a little, a few grounds floating on top. Now, if I drink that, well, um, I didn't take a very big drink. Um, if I were to take a larger drink, um, I think the coffee grounds, as I tip them back, will mix down into the milk a bit more. And then when I put the milk container back upright, they will sink to the bottom again. But anyway, um, now, I'm chewing. When I tip back like that, I did get a, a few tiny coffee grounds in my mouth. And I think the main trick that you want to use when you eat food that's um, sort of unpleasant, or what we think of, it's not the texture we generally think of ourselves as eating. It really isn't unpleasant, but it might seem that way because you're not used to eating it. Hey, this might. Hey, this milk container is like a microphone in front of me. But anyway, uh, the trick I think is don't be in a rush to eat them. Like I think mostly when we eat our human food, it tastes really nice. It's very palatable, and we can eat it fast. We can just get right in there and chew it. But with these coffee grounds. Yeah, I wish I should have kept some here. I should have kept some to show you better. Okay, I'm going to lick some off this um, filter. So now I have a bunch in my mouth. And I'm talking to you. Now they're sitting on my tongue. I'm really not rush, rushing to eat them. Now I've kind of moved them to the side of my mouth, but I still haven't really eaten any. And Okay, I just ch chewed down on them once with my side teeth to the, well, it's my left, it's your, let's see, actually, they're on, they're, oh, they're on this side now. They're my left, but they're your right. Now, I just took another, it's like a press on them, it's not really a chew, I'm pressing on them here and there. See, I think you can see that they're still over there, and I'm pressing on them now and then. But I'm not rushing to eat them like I would with, um, you know, just the regular human food that we eat. Like, if I had a piece of pizza in my mouth, I'd chew it faster. So, as I eat them slowly, and when I chew on them, some of the flavor of them goes into my mouth. I don't mean chew when I kind of it's like one chew but it's not really exactly like a chew because I'm not breaking them up fast so I can swallow them I'm kinda mashing them might be a better word now and slowly 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 I'm gonna get more of the flavor out of them and actually my saliva, my mouth is producing saliva and I'm naturally swallowing it every now and then. I don't know if everybody swallows their saliva every 20 or 30 seconds, but I do. Yeah, I'm mashing. There's still some in there. But even if I open my mouth, I don't think you could see them. But they're over there. They're on top. They're sort of between my, well, I'm not sure. Is it called molars down on the bottom? I think those are the molars back there. 
but like I say, my mouth automatically produces saliva. Every time I produce saliva, I think a few are kind of washing down my throat. And they're so tiny that they're kind of... Well, you guys might find them annoying when they wash down your throat. I kind of enjoy it just because it's different <coughs> and it kind of makes me feel almost powerful that I can eat this thing that's kind of unusual that I have a technique for eating it but I get pleasure out of them um, that I can eat them without gagging or getting upset like um, people would maybe who hadn't gotten to this place that I've gotten to. So they're still actually there, right? That's them. I just put them back. As they've reduced, the number is reduced in size, well I'm just going to leave them in there because there's no rush, right? Now, if I... I happen not to be that thirsty right now. I probably made this video because the coffee filter was available to me and I didn't know if it might get thrown away. But, for example, if I were to drink a little more milk, well, a few more might wash down my throat. Eventually they're going to get eaten. But actually when I took that milk, the milk went down the center and of course the grounds are tucked over here so I didn't get that many. But sooner or later they'll be gone. Uh, I can move them to the front of my mouth and that's okay too. And um, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty good. Um, now, as I get further down, of course, I'm going to get close to where the mass of them are. And when I start getting more in my mouth, I'm going to be a little careful and kind of control how many I get. But and then probably what's going to happen when I get down to the mass of them. For a, a bit of time, I'll be able to handle quite a few of them. But eventually it may be that I'll be tipping the thing back and getting coffee grounds and it'll get to be too many coffee grounds. So then I'm just going to put this funnel back in and I'm going to add some more milk to the, um, to the bottom of the jug. And that, that'll sort of dilute, you might say, how many coffee grounds I'm getting in proportion to the milk and they'll be easy to handle again probably I'll be getting more than I, I, I have right now though um, this I just did to show you but um, you know sooner or later if you drinking them down and then refilling uh, within they, they get they do get consumed they do get consumed and they're pretty like I say I enjoy them um, for me it's a little break from pure milk and uh, it's a different taste and I sort of think it it educates me about um, well maybe about coffee or food or the composition of food or it might make me think about my taste buds or the sense of taste um, I don't know. I haven't gotten any big revelations about coffee yet by doing this. It does remind one that they started out as a whole bean and then got busted up by the processor. Um, but I would think that as I keep doing it, actually I just started doing the coffee grounds. I've done lots of other kinds of food kind of this way, but I just started doing the coffee grounds but I would think it'll be somewhat educational about coffee so if you like do it um, it's obviously it's most doable with a, ga a big container of milk um, so 
if you want to tr play with it, you might want to buy yourself a big container of milk. And I would feel good about that if you did, because I really believe in milk. I'd like to think that I was selling you a, a big container of milk. Um, so I can't think what else to say about it. Um, so if you have anything to say or ask, uh, put it put it in the comments below, as they say.